With the Saints receiving core on life support, the return of rookie Chris Olave is sorely needed. The 11th round selection out of Ohio State, who leads the Saints in receiving with 25 catches and 389 yards, was literally knocked out of the game against the Seahawks in Week 5, all while recording his second touchdown of the season. Alave claims he's 100% after following the league's mandated concussion protocols and says big hits like this are expected when you play in the NFL. And the Thursday night kickoff for the Saints at Cardinals is set for 7:15. It's business as usual. That's the message from head coach of the nationally ranked Green Wave and his players. Saturday afternoon against Memphis, the Wave hope to protect that ranking and the top spot in the American Athletic Conference. And Tulane is a seven-point favorite over Memphis. The Tigers have won 13 of the last 15 games in the series, but Tulane has won the last two meetings at Yulman Stadium. The Pelicans opened the season Wednesday night at Brooklyn. Last year, the Pelicans won only three of their first 19 games. Willie Green on how to get off to a fast start this season. And we will see you for another edition of Friday Night Football, always presented by the All-State Sugar Bowl, NOAA 38 at 11, WGNO at midnight. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Kurt, Susie? Man, how about them Cowboys? I mean, I just had to put that out there for I don't know why. <laughs> oh, bring on the hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron, and thank you for watching WGNO News. Well, let's ask, how many snaps at quarterback should Taysom get? Aaron Lee, you say. Well, I say as many as humanly possible. I mean, put them at middle linebacker if you can. <laughs> Listen, but I don't believe you'll catch the Bengals this week napping like the Seahawks last Sunday. I think that's an excellent point. Richie Mills, you say, are you impatient with LSU football and Brian Kelly? You losing patience with the Tigers, Aaron Lee? No, uh, not at all. I mean, listen, LSU is 4-2. and two. Those two losses came against Florida State, which rolled off to 4-0, and oh, and like LSU, had a cup of coffee in the top 25, and of course last week to Tennessee, who is undefeated and now ranked 6. Look, this is a rebuilding year, and that's exactly what Coach Kelly is doing. Rebuilding. The University of New Orleans men's and women's basketball teams held a meet and greet with the season ticket holders at Lakefront Arena this evening. And both head coaches say it's never been better to be a Privateers Hoops fan. And both squads begin their season on November 7th. And sticking with basketball, the NBA preseason is underway and the Pelicans tipped off against the Bulls tonight and currently lead 97-88 in the waning minutes of the third Zion with, seven, with 15 minutes of action, but 13 points on the night. So looking good so far. The Pels host the Pistons on Friday at 7. New Orleans starts the season on the road October 19th against the Nets. Switching to college football, Tulane starter Michael Pratt practiced Tuesday and is expected to play at home Saturday for the Green Wave against East Carolina. But if for some reason Tulane has to go to the bench, they have several options, including third stringer, who performed superbly in a win at Houston. Ed Daniels. The Saints are 1-3 for the first time in six years. In London, against the Vikings, this was one that, well, it got away. Andy Dalton making his first start for the Saints. He played well. Here's his first New Orleans touchdown pass. Four yards to rookie receiver Chris Olave. His first TD as well. And in college football, the LSU Tigers gave Brian Kelly his first SEC road win after scoring 21 unanswered against Auburn Saturday night. The victory wasn't pretty, but Coach Kelly commended his team's refusal to quit. And after a 2017 win at Auburn, LSU cracks the top 25. The Tigers are number 25 in the Associated Press poll. And that's a look at sports. Wishing you a very wonderful day, New Orleans. Well, the Saints have had some tough losses this season, but none tougher than today's in London against the Vikings. Here's our Aaron Esley with how the victory got away from New Orleans. Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> you know, just when you think this season could not get any worse, it most certainly did. Saints fall 28-25, but the score only begins to tell a portion of the story. And officiating was a huge part of it. Saints if you're looking for parity in college football, look no further than the Southland Conference. The Southland held its media day this week, giving us a look at what the upcoming season holds for both Southeastern and Nichols. And our very own Richie Mills, he has more. 
And thanks, Richie. Always great work. And in more preseason news, the Sunbelt Media Days will be held right here in New Orleans on Tuesday and Wednesday, featuring the likes of Louisiana Lafayette, Louisiana Monroe, and newly joined Southern Miss Amy Russo to the top. And of course, remember, we are just weeks away from the return of Friday Night Football. And uh, that's Ed Daniels and JT Curtis. The 31st season of FNF kicks off August 19th, starting at 11 p.m. on NOAA 38 and again at midnight on WGNO. Amy, can't wait. I can't wait either. I, that's going to be so much fun to watch. And you know, Aaron, I also, as you were doing sports the whole time, couldn't help but notice that tie. You've got very you. WG no spirited. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, great gift from my father. He's, he's battling the big C, but I tell you what, he's winning. Big shout out to mom and dad in the 318. All right, well, Aaron, always a joy to have you on set with us. Thanks so much for coming in. Uptown New Orleans on a Wednesday night can only mean one thing this summer. High school seven-on-seven -seven football at Newman's Michael Lupin Field. Hall of Famer and former Greeny Peyton Manning looking on, and he likes what he sees from the start. Nephew Arch Manning connects with Anthony Jones for six. And, of course, last season the Colonels finished the year with six wins and five losses. That home game on the 24th against Jacksonville State. Tonight, Colorado defeated Tampa Bay 3-2 in overtime to take a 3-1 lead in the NHL Championship Series. Game five of the Stanley Cup Finals is Friday on WGNO. And you can watch Thursday night's NBA Draft live right here on WGNO and ABC. Coverage, guys, tips off at 7. I'm tempted to become a hockey fan if it'll cool us down a little bit. Maybe just watching the people on the ice will help cool us down a little bit because let me tell you, it's brutal around here. Are you a big hockey fan? Uh, not at all, but I did like the snowballs we got from Hanson today. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thanks to John Cruz, the general manager. Appreciate that. We did have That's Hansons good. in the house. It was nice. All right. Our Aaron Lee is where he can get Wi-Fi in Natchitoches with a report. One week after a thrilling come from behind victory over 5A Benton at Michael Lupin Field, Arch Manning and company travel to Manny for a battle of unbeatens, but they will have to do so without star tight end and fellow future Longhorn, Will Randall. You know, Will Randall's irreplaceable. You can't, you know, I, you know he's one of those guys, I think arguably um, in my career, uh, he's the finest total football player that, you know, I've ever coached. It's going to be hard for me to even give 87 out again. Uh, I told his father that this morning, and um, thank God he's going to Texas so he can still catch balls from Arch. I think it's kind of prophetic it worked out like that. But, you know, look, we had to move eight or ten guys positionally on Monday. Uh, we had to do that just because of his impact. He just was so much more than just a tight end or defensive end. So. And Will Randall will be missed in more ways than one as the nation's top quarterback, Arch Manning, squares off against arguably the state's strongest safety, Tackett Curtis. And of course, we'll have all the highlights tonight on Friday Night Football. Back to you, Ed.